Good morning. A central responsibility for any government is to do what's necessary for economic stability. This is vital for businesses making long-term investment decisions and for families concerned about their jobs, their mortgages and the cost of living. No government can control markets, but every government can give certainty about the sustainability of public finances. And that is one of the many factors that influence how markets behave. And for that reason, although the Prime Minister and I are both committed to cutting corporation tax, on Friday she listened to concerns about the mini-budget and confirmed we will not proceed with the cut to corporation tax announced. The Government has today decided to make further changes to the mini-budget and to reduce unhelpful speculation about what they are, we've decided to announce these ahead of the medium-term fiscal plan, which happens in two weeks. I'll give a detailed statement to Parliament this afternoon and answer questions from MPs. But because these decisions are market-sensitive, I've agreed with the Speaker the need to give an early, brief summary of the changes, which are all designed to provide confidence and stability. Firstly, we will reverse almost all the tax measures announced in the Growth Plan three weeks ago that have not started parliamentary legislation. So whilst we will continue with the abolition of the health and social care levy and stamp duty changes, we will no longer be proceeding with the cuts to dividend tax rates, the reversal of off-payroll working reforms introduced in 2017 and 2021, the new VAT-free shopping scheme for non-UK visitors, or the freeze on alcohol duty rates. Secondly, the Government's current plan is to cut the basic rate of income tax to 19% from April 2023. It is a deeply held Conservative value, a value that I share, that people should keep more of the money they earn. But at a time when markets are rightly demanding commitment to sustainable public finances, it is not right to borrow to fund this tax cut. So I've decided that the basic rate of income tax will remain at 20%, and it will do so indefinitely until economic circumstances allow for it to be cut. Taken together with the decision not to cut corporation tax, and restoring the top rate of income tax, the measures I've announced today will raise every year around £32 billion. Finally, the biggest single expense in the growth plan was the energy price guarantee. This is a landmark policy supporting millions of people through a difficult winter. And today I want to confirm that the support we are providing between now and April next year will not change. But beyond that, the Prime Minister and I have agreed it would not be responsible to continue exposing public finances to unlimited volatility in international gas prices. So I'm announcing today a Treasury-led review into how we support energy bills beyond April next year. The objective is to design a new approach that will cost the taxpayer significantly less than planned, whilst ensuring enough support for those in need. Any support for businesses will be targeted to those most affected and the new approach will better incentivise energy efficiency. The most important objective for our country right now is stability. Governments cannot eliminate volatility in markets, but they can play their part and we will do so because instability affects the prices of things in shops, the cost of mortgages and the values of pensions. There will be more difficult decisions, I'm afraid, on both tax and spending as we deliver our commitment to get debt falling as a share of the economy over the medium term. All departments will need to redouble their efforts to find savings and some areas of spending will need to be cut. But as I promised at the weekend, our priority in making the difficult decisions that lie ahead will always be the most vulnerable. And I remain extremely confident 
about the UK's long-term economic prospects as we deliver our mission to go for growth. But growth requires confidence and stability, and the United Kingdom will always pay its way. This government will therefore take whatever tough decisions are necessary to do so.